Elijah and Moses. So when you come out of prayer and you are walking, can you just imagine the amount of glory that you have amassed around you? Fear, the Bible says, and fear fell on the apostles. They said, Lord, let us make tent here so that Charlie, we name it after you guys. Jesus said, shh, don't say anything to anybody. But that didn't change them. All. How do I know? When Jesus went into uh, the, the garden of Gethsemane and asked them to pray so that their countenance would change, they were sleeping. No wonder when Peter couldn't cut the revelation. No wonder when the when the, the, the soldiers came, he took a knife. He's now trying to show his practical powers. Jesus said, You couldn't help me to pray. If we're talking about war, I could have asked 6,000 angels to come down and fight for me. So Jesus said, No, Master, He took the ear and pasted it. The kind of help Jesus wanted was prayer. So when we pray together as a team, you have no idea the way I help you and the way you help me. The Bible calls it the supplication of prayer or the spirit. So if the devil wants to, I mean, hurt the church, he will scatter like what is happening now. No congregation. Because there are some people, they are weak. Once they enter into church and we pray together, they get strengthened. But we are going back to the church. Yeah. Are you following? Yes. Do I have enough time? All right. All right. Verse what? Four, right? Yes. Yes. So also, now he described the, 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 the priesthood according to men. Okay, Aaron. Then he said, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. They were priests, but Jesus was high. Listen to this. They were priests, but Jesus was a high priest. And you have become like him, and we share, we are joined just with him. What are you? You are just like him. Your priesthood is high. <laughs> Woo! There is a higher order. But the Bible says, But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. That's when Jesus became born again. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever. Our priesthood is forever. After the order of Melchizedek. Alright? Now, he said that Jesus is a high priest. And that priesthood is forever. An everlasting high priest. The earthly priest was not eternal because Aaron died. And his children had to take over. They died. And another person, they are, they are, they are not eternal. But the kind of high, the kind of priesthood God has given you is eternal. Because it's in a particular order in a man called or a being called Melchizedek. Alright? Now let's go and look at Melchizedek, what God was talking about. Go to chapter 7. Hebrew chapter 7, verse 1, verse 1. I trust God that time will not fail us. Okay, so he said that Jesus, the high priest, his priesthood is in the order of Melchizedek. Now look at Hebrews chapter 7 from verse 1. He said that for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God. Did he hear that? In, in chapter 5, he didn't talk about king. He said his, his priesthood is in the order of Melchizedek. But here, when the Bible was describing the the personality of Melchizedek, he didn't even start with priest. He said king. Do you know why? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 8, the Bible says that where the word of a king is, there is what? What does the priest do? He stands and offers sacrifices, prayer unto God. Cause things to be done. So we have been made kings so that the words of the priest shall be powerful. That's what it means. Listen, if you catch this and you are praying, you just know. You, you don't think it. You just know what I have said will happen. 
you just know. Because you see, the normal words, even during Aaron's time, it was what Mo Mo Moses would say that really matters. What the prophet was saying, because the prophet's words were powerful. But today, thanks be to God, all of us, all Christians, our words are powerful. If you know. If you know. Alright? Beautiful. So the Bible says, Melchizedek, king of Salem. Salem is a place in heaven. Okay? We'll look at it later. Priest of the Most High God. That means God has a priest. Called Melchizedek. And Jesus' priesthood is like Melchizedek. Meaning that Jesus is also a high priest to God. And we have been made like Christ. Priest. So we too, we are priest unto God. So when God sees you, he sees his high priest. Now when you are crying over little matters, God is shocked about how his high priest is. Hey, hey. Now I want you to catch this. This is very serious. When, listen, you have no idea how God sees you and you are crying over little matters. When you can change things. God is seeing his high priest. He's seeing his king priest crying. Have you seen a king crying because, because of what? The king can be in a small palace and send people out there and say, there is a land somewhere. There are some people there. Ask them to leave. It will be executed. Are you a king? Yes. So when you pray, angels are moved in the name of Jesus to make sure it happens. The point is, do you believe and do you know? So instead of crying, instead of lamenting, instead of complaining, when you do these things, God is just watching you. The angels are, they are like, hey. That is why you see, Jesus was surprised about the centurion that said, Jesus, only say the word. That was the language of kingship. He said, Jesus, only say the word. Jesus said, what? I have not seen such faith, great faith in the whole of Israel. Jesus was not moved by the behavior of people. He was moved by the word. The way the kind understood kingship. Look at, look at, what, look at what he said. He said, Jesus, he knew about kingdoms. So he said, Jesus, just speak the word. For I too, I am a man under authority. And I have men under me. When I say go, they go. When I say come, they come. So speak the word. He's talking the kingdom language. That's what I told you. So it is the information you have that determines your behavior. If you understand the kingdom language, if you understand how things work there, it informs the way you talk. Otherwise, you just be living life and, and you get frustrated thinking that I have been praying, I have been doing this, and yet I'm not receiving answers. You can't blame God. Listen to me, listen to me. God is never doing anything again for anybody. You know what? It has been done and he has empowered you. Be ready, Revelation uh, um, 5.10. He says he has made you a king so that you reign. He has given you to you. Should you, listen, when you go to the other world, okay, people say they've taken my picture to a fetish shrine. And then when you watch a movie, you see them. Then they take, you are not there. Then they take your idol. And they take me. And they say they are breaking, your, they are breaking me, me. I'm breaking your leg. And if you are not a Christian, you are not prayerful, you are, you are not protected. It happens to you. Then by prophecy, maybe we'll pick up that no, somebody has done this against you. But they were not there. That is how power works. That is how power works. So I don't need to see it to make they, and they know it is happening. If you have this real understanding of who you are, a king priest. So it means that when you enter into prayer, the king priest has entered. His words are powerful. There are angels ready. Are angels not ministers to be sent for to serve? That's what the Bible says. Are angels not ministering spirits sent for to serve those that shall inherit salvation? Have you inherited salvation? Yes. Then angels are ready, waiting for you. So as you enter into prayer because you don't have money, your financial situation is some way. Of course, if you are not paying tithe and offering, there's another matter. But if you are paying your tithe and your offering, 
and still you are not seeing it. They, of course, yes. if you don't pay your tithe and your offering, what do you expect? There's a, a demon called devourer. You chop your, your things. But if you are paying tithe, if faithfully, you are paying your offerings, and still the devil is fighting it, then you, the king priest will enter and say, God, let's have a chat. But the Bible says that he that speaketh in, in, in unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men. It's not a man matter. For no man understands it because there is a mystery. Something is happening. I need to understand. For all you know, God wants you to take a big seed and go and sow it somewhere else to break for this one. So you enter in, in, into prayer. You pray first day. If you don't have that note, note of victory in your spirit, you continue. On the third day, you add one day fasting. You pray. And then as you begin to pray, the Holy Spirit begins to give you deep understanding. He gives you an eye, like an understanding of the mystery, what is happening behind the scenes. And once you catch it, you laugh at the devil. <laughs> because when you spoke, he didn't know. He, he doesn't know where you've been. But you come back and you're not responding to what he's doing. Once you do that, angels are released. To go and take care of the matters. You know, I heard Pastor Chris preach one day. He said he felt some sharp pain in his right rib. He prayed, confessed, did everything he had to do, and he the thing was not going. Then he entered into prayer. Prayed and prayed and prayed. He didn't hear from God first day, second day, third day. On the third day, a man of God came to visit him. Then, when the man of God was about to go, I think he had bought a new car, or somebody has dashed him a new car. Then he heard the voice of God say, give the car to him. Then he gave the keys. Listen, if you can't give God your 20 gun or your 10 gun, you can't give car. So there are some Christians, God has to take them through the process. A father of mine said, if you can't buy common tambourine for church, stop thinking about building a, a house, a, a, a church for, for God. It's a lie. Because you don't have that's why you are talking plenty. To give a car out is not easy. For you to receive 100,000 Ghana CD and pay 10,000 Ghana CD as, as, as tight, you think it's easy? You are looking at 10,000, you are. <laughs> it's not easy. I know what I'm talking about. You, you'll be like, God, let me use this one and the next one I'll give it to you. Because you have not been faithful from the little. So I tell people, tithe is not about the, the amount of money. It's about the faith behind it. So your tithe can be one CD, it can be two CD, it can If that is what you have, you give it to him so you grow. If be faithful. But if you are not faithful in that, you think you can give 100,000 as like other people are doing. Anyway, that's another topic. God bless you. So you see, when he gave the car out, the pain was still there because he could see the car. So he said he watched, he went out of his house, watched the man go, and then when the man negotiated the case and he couldn't see him in again, any, anymore, the pain left him. You know why? As long as his eyes was beholding the car, it still belonged to him. His heart was his heart was aside. So when the car left, when the man he couldn't see him again, then the pain left him. So it wasn't the devil that was dealing with him. It was God that was trying to listen to somebody's prayer. <laughs> so God can cause your prayer to make somebody feel uneasy and bless you for them to feel easy. Should I prophesy that for you? If you pray on me, it won't work. <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So the Bible says that he's a king priest. After the order of what? Melchizedek. The Bible says Melchizedek is a king and he's a priest. The Bible says, Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him? Melchizedek blessed him. Kings and priests, we have been called to bless people. That is why you should love all men so you can bless them. If you don't love, you can't bless. So you even pray for those who hate you. Why? 
so you can bless them. You can buy a car for them, buy a plate for them, buy a bedroom for them. Otherwise, your prayer will be different. You will say, God, bless me so he will see that I serve a living God. That prayer, a bit cheer off. <laughs> Do you know the Bible says that even when your enemy hurts you, and you pray to God, and God, I forgot in Proverbs 23 or something, and God is answering your prayer. The Bible says, when you are overjoyed, God will leave him alone. The way God sees us, we, we, you need to, listen, get into the word. You will know how he thinks. You will know how he sees us. So you cannot pray like him. So people will go to church, pray and kill. Well, they want to kill a, 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 a person like themselves. And then when the person is in pain, and the person is dying, then they will go to church. That's what they give. That why you ask them to bring $1,000, they will bring. Testimony time. They will roll on the floor. Somebody is listening to me. You have been there. The enemy is dying. Thank God, my enemy. But the Bible says, one day, Jesus said, the apostles came to him. People were making fun of them. And they said, Jesus, the way Elijah called fire from heaven to burn the children that Elisha, that love that, you know, he was born. Let us call fire to come and burn them. Jesus looked at them. And said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are made of. We did not come to kill. We came to bless. So as a king priest, one of your assignments is to bless people. Charlie, the more people hate you, the more you have to go down your knees and say, God, bless them. Proverbs 24, 17. Okay, let's read. Thank you. We'll come back to you. Okay, read it for me. What does it say? Have you opened it? He said, Rejoice not when you, thy enemy fallen, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbles. Really? My idea is what my because you see the enemy you are looking at is not the one that it is. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, not you, not, not. So you see, when people go for prayer meetings and they tell them there is a is there somebody in your house, somebody, yes, there can be an influence. The devil can the devil is so empty, eh? He can't just do things on his own. He needs people to do his bidding. Not that. So if the enemy wants to get into your life, I mean, if you're a lady, the devil wants to get into your life and destroy you, he cannot do it directly. He can use a gentleman to come and propose to you and come and scatter your life. So when we note that, we cast out the devil from, from the person and the person will recover. See, brother, this is the solution. Pray. Introduce them to Jesus Christ. The person, the people that hate you. Pray for them. The day you get a chance, tell them about Jesus. Tell them Jesus loves them. Zacchaeus, that was what happened to him. He was collecting people's monies. So they hated him. So the day Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down and come to your house, they were surprised. Jesus, you don't know, he will take your money. He's a criminal. He's a criminal. But listen, when Jesus entered his house, Jesus did not go there with judgment, with, with, a, with a thought of judgment. He went there as a man that loves people and to introduce the kingdom of God to them. So he ate with them. He laughed. And the presence and the righteousness of Jesus Christ began to torture the guy that he couldn't sit. Then once they sat, the Bible says he got up and went to where he has hidden all the money. Opened and said, if I have my deceitful way, taking what belongs to other people, I am going to double it and give it to them. Then Jesus said, today, salvation has come to your house. This thing that I'm telling you, I preached it somewhere and one man, one man just held on to the way. You remember? He bought a land somewhere. I, went down, I forgot the place. Then the, the king, you know, the reselling of, reselling of land, they took the land and they sold it to somebody else. The land was, like by the roadside, it was very nice. Then they came to tell me that, look, they are going to fight the guy. If they have to go to court, I said, hey, we are not of that. 
take it through prayer and introduce them to Jesus Christ. You can do that in your prayer. Say, Lord, touch them. Love them. He began to pray. The following week, he came to tell me, hey, prophet, the thing you said, now they have, if the man called me, he said he couldn't sleep, he called me. He has given me a bigger one than the first one. Closer than the road than the first one. What if he had gone to fight him? He would have lost it. He's the king. What can you do? He's a man of authority. What can you do? Nothing. So you see, there are a lot of things that we don't battle through physical means. Tooth for a tooth, eye for an eye. No. This is you hate me, I love you. It might not be easy, but that is our life, the kingdom life. Okay, okay. So let's go back to uh, let's go back to Hebrews, right? Hebrews chapter 7. I was at verse 4. Beautiful. No. Yes. The Bible says, verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth of the parts of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that king of Salem, which is king of peace. And he kept saying, king, 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 king. Now let me show you something that will blow your mind. Because of time. Why did God say, or what has always been God's perspective to things, to these things? Before the foundations of the world, you know, God, Father God is a king, you know. And he loved to raise kings and priests. Because God loves prayer. So he loved people to pray unto him. I have never read to hear angels pray. No, I know they worship. But prayer, we pray. Because they are not priests. But let's go to Revelation chapter 5. Let me read from verse 1. The Bible says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, okay, written within on the backside and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? Now listen, verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor in the earth, nor neither under the earth, was able to take, to open the book, neither to look thereon. So opportunity was given to those in heaven on earth, under the earth. So the devil was around. He couldn't handle it. Okay? Now look at verse 4. And I wept, John, and I wept because no man was found worthy to open the, uh, to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not! Say, weep not. Weep not. Behold, mean see, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. He said, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Behold, meaning see. So, in other words, he was trying to tell him, look over there, see, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So, if it were you, what would you be? When you turn around, you're supposed to see a lion, which, huh? right? Because he says, "See, there's a lion on the tribe of Judah. He's capable of doing that." Let's read on. Verse six, huh? So, and I beheld, meaning, and I looked, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. As it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Isn't this strange? He said, See, the elder said, See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he is capable. Then John said, When I turned, I did not see a lion, I saw a lamb. Do you know what was happening? The elder was seeing a lion, John was seeing a lamb. And we know the lamb, the lion is the king of the animals. 
So he actually saw a king, but when he looked, he saw a priest with sacrifice. The Bible says that he looked as a lamb that was slain. So when John, because when John turned around, he saw a lamb as it had been slain. He saw a priest. So two people are looking at the same person. They are looking at a king and a priest. Do you know what it means? It takes a king priest to be able to access certain things from God directly. Because nobody could. Nobody could. Not the angels. Not even the 24 elders. Not the Jemichael. Not the devil. Not John himself. But he said, I behold and saw a lamb. You ask yourself, so when he saw the lion and they took the lion away and brought the lamb or what? No. Let me tell you this prophetically. Sometimes when you are praying you know, against a particular force, it is not the lion that comes to scare it away. It is actually the lamb. But it's actually the lamb that appears and the devil runs away. He sees the blood. But when God is working with you, he works with you as a lion. Do you know it is not your... The things... I, I don't have the words, but... You see, in our, in our kingdom, in our kingdom life... It is not the things you do forcefully and energy. They are not the things that actually give results. They are actually the things you do them quietly and silently. God gave Elijah a feel of these things. When he was praying and thought God was going to speak to him through the thunders, through the whirlwind, through the... He didn't see. He only had a still Can I tell you something? When you feed on God's word and you become a man of prayer, the kind of results you get, okay, they are not actually prayers that you pray um, moving up and down. Going. Most of the things that happen, they are prayers you just, they are things you just even recite, like you just say them. How does that become true? Because the Bible says in the book of John chapter 15, it says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask of that which ye will. Whatever you want. He said you shall ask of them and it shall be done. And I explained the word done, the Greek word done, the meaning is it shall be created. If something will be created, it means it doesn't exist. So what Jesus was trying to say that if you abide in him and you allow, so if you are a Christian and the word of God is not abiding in you, the, the, the number of victories in your life will be little. It will be according to, you know, I mean, it will, be, it will be around those times that you'll be saying that I've been praying and I don't see results. Then we ask you, because when we talk to you, we realize that what you are saying is not, doesn't, doesn't you know, uh, I mean, it's not in line with the word of God. And the truth is that a lot of Christians think that because the kind of victory God has given us, it, it's so simple, it's so straightforward. We don't like that. So, for example, I have seen a prophet, I have seen something on you that God is going to. Maybe I, I saw on your head, you know, a halo, and I saw gold on your neck or a golden key that's, that signifies wealth. That you're going to be a rich man. If I tell you that, oh, God says you are going to be a rich man, you will not believe. Because it looks too simple. So I will tell you, I saw a brown horse and I sat on the horse. And I began to fly in the spirit. Then I saw the cloth open and I saw a pink bed. When I saw the pink bed, the pink bed is your name? Yes. Meanwhile, I've seen your name. I could have mentioned it easily. But you will not believe. I know. 
Then the eight, then the lion, uh, the horse began to summon us. Then we entered, and I saw a golden key given to you. We going to say, You are shivering because it looks so. You saw us. You ran. So I see. Let me say this. It is like, you know, there are some meat pie in town. When you buy them, when you open, they look big. But when you look there, it's only on tray. <laughs> they are deceptive. Meanwhile, you would have seen a, a meat pie that looks very small but rich. You don't like that one. You like the one that looks big. <laughs> the onion, it's not like big, big onion, like slight, small, small. In the middle of the pie, the air will take the rest. The, the one you buy, you are disappointed. So a lot of people will receive some prophecies and they get disappointed. He says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. That is why we love to teach you the word. So that the word will abide in you. Without the word, there's nothing that, that can be ever made. He says, and there was nothing made that was ever made without the word. The word is what you need for that breakthrough. There is nothing else. Yeah. That is why even when you receive a prophecy, it, the prophecy should be in line with God's word. Like today, somebody was sharing a story. I was praying for the person. He said, one man of God says, I should take carry a goat and go to the grave. Yeah. Somebody said, you are not getting married. I see a big woman, standing, a big man standing by you, spiritual. There is nothing written in the Bible called spiritual, man, spiritual husband. Hear me. Whatever is not in the word does not exist. Amen. We believe, so it happens. All things are possible to them that believe. So the, the person says, Go and take eggs, three. For what? Why you tell these people that, look, it is done. In Jesus' name, it is done. Because the Bible says, at the mention of the name Jesus, every, they don't, people have not come to the understanding of the power in the name of Jesus. So when you tell them, in the name of Jesus, this matter is settled. <laughs> I remember I prayed for somebody, you know, the person had a stomach ache or something, and I, I, the person was drinking water, and I said, give it to me. So once I touched it, I gave it back to him, the person. He said, oh, you didn't pray. I said, it's done. Is it in line with the word of God? Yes. The Bible says, we shall lay our hands on the sick, and they shall recover, right? What is in my hands? He didn't say we shall pray. He said, just if, the, if you are sick, you know you can't be sick, right? But if you are sick, and I lay my hands on you, you should be healed. Without praying. Yeah. So if I touch, it means that there's something about my hand. What is in my hands that moves into your body that casts away sickness, that causes sickness to flee? There's something, there's something in me. Do you believe? So I can touch the water. And transfer the same thing in there. And it shall work. Yeah. That is why now that we are out of time. That is why now the devil influences people to say that when you bless people with money on the street, they will use your money for ritual. So now a lot of people don't bless people again. They don't even bless the new people because you are afraid they will use your money for ritual. Do you understand what happens when you also touch money? Do you know what is imparted? The Bible says aprons and handkerchiefs that were taken from the body of Paul. They were, they were cast. I mean, demons were fleeing by the prayer. Not handkerchief. Handkerchief were put on his body. And it was put on the sick. And they were living. Look at our broadcast, our radio broadcast. 
People get healed over the airwaves. We are not there to touch them. But we speak. Because when we speak, there's something that moves. There's power. Do you remember the Bible says that and when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. Have you used it before? You have not used it. Yes, you are complaining. Now, forget even about all of them. He has given you the name that is above every other name. And he has assured you and said, at the mention of this name, every knee, he says, of things in heaven and on earth, and then they must bow. And there is a situation you are going through and you are crying. A priest crying. A king priest. From today, don't cry. You've been shaking. You've been is that a correct statement? You've been shaving, you've been disgracing yourself before the holy angels and before God in the heavens. In the courtroom, when you are crying, you are crying, you are crying. Then God is watching you. One day, can I take it? Okay? Of blessed memories. He had a, revel a revel revelation. Jesus Christ was standing there, he was standing here. And they were talking. Hmm? Then a demon appeared in between them. And the demon was, was trying to distract Kenneth again. And that's what they always do. Trying to distract them. And then smoke started building. So Kenneth again couldn't see, but Jesus kept talking. Jesus was not moved, he wasn't disturbed. But Kenneth again was disturbed. He was <laughs> he was moved, he was considering what the demon was doing. Distracting, and that's what he does to a lot of Christians distract people. Then smoke started filling the place, quite smoke. So, Kenneth Hagen couldn't see Jesus properly then. Meanwhile, he could hear Jesus' voice, Jesus was still talking. Then he said, He thought Jesus would do something about the devil. So, at the point when he realized that the thing was getting too irritating, he said, Jesus, can't you see the devil do something about it? He said, Kenneth. Why, what are you also doing about the devil? <laughs> he said, you, I'm waiting for you to do something. Then, Kenneth Hagen was angry in the spirit and said, in the name of, before he finished, the devil lay down like, reduced his size into like the size of a mouse and put his tail, you know when the devil is afraid, he put his tail in between his legs. So the devil, the demon lay down and the atmosphere, you know, then he asked Jesus, but Jesus, why did you do anything about it? You know Jesus' answer? If you don't do anything about it, I can't do anything about it. I was shocked when I read it. Then you know why he took my attention? In Matthew 18, he said, Whatsoever you bind here, it shall be bound. What do you want to be bound in heaven? Heaven is waiting for you to bind whatever you want to bind. To lose whatever you want to lose. You are crying. You cry and heaven is waiting on you. May your faith be strengthened. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I hope you have been blessed and your life will never be the same. Just watch out for the next episode and it's going to be amazing. Now, for those of you who have not subscribed to my page yet, please visit my page on, on YouTube, Prophet Daniel Jedu, and subscribe. And then don't forget to also click on the notification button so you can be receiving a lot of videos from us as and when we upload them. If you have any questions, if you have any uh, prayer request, you can just inbox us or you can just comment and we will make sure we get back at you. The Lord bless you. See you next time. In Jesus' name. Amen.